by that time we had started to outsource so we we got a prep centre um, and realised very quickly that the only way to scale was to just start outsourcing everything so literally in the last 10 weeks we've outsourced everything and our business has just gone boom I mean we've we, this month we will have We've looked and we've done 476% increase on what we did this time last year and 70% increase on what we did this time last month. I think what's really happened in the last three months is a huge amount of belief in myself and my ability has come through. So from that now, all of these other business ideas have come up and um, there just seems to be opportunities presenting themselves left, right and centre and I'm just starting to say yes and then work out the details afterwards, which is really exciting. Hello, this is Kev from LifeSuccessEngineer.com and today I'm joined by a very special guest. We have Sophie here. She's been an Amazon seller for approximately 17 months at this point. She's done over 300,000 pounds in revenue. And this month is going to be an amazing month, going up towards 70,000 in one month. So I'm super excited to um, meet Sophie and share Sophie's story, what she's been up to over the last sort of 18 to 17 months, 17, 18 months. And uh, we'll, um, yeah, we'll, we'll dig down to who Sophie is. So welcome, Sophie. Awesome. Thanks, Kev. Very excited to be here with you. I'm super excited for you to be here. So for, for somebody who is just watching this for the first time, who's Sophie? How did you get into Amazon? What is it that you do? Just give somebody just a bit of a, a general idea of who you are. Okay, awesome. Um, so as I said, I'm Sophie. I'm actually in a partnership with my mom, uh, Penny. So normally it's Sophie and Penny. I'm the Sophie part of that, but she's in London Christmas shopping today instead. <laughs> um, so I had um, quite a good career previously to having my son. Um, I worked in a property investment company as the head of sales, so lots of um, bonuses and commissions. I was very financially driven. Um, I was generating over sort of three million income for that company just myself before I added my team values to it. And then I left that business in January 2018, went on maternity leave and had my first child, uh, George, in February 2018. And I knew I didn't really want to go back, but I loved the money side um, and just having the financial freedom to make whatever choices. But obviously it came at a price as well of 25 days or whatever holiday a year and having to be at work when someone else told you to and run by their schedule. And having George really emphasized to me that that wasn't what I wanted to do going forward. Um, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to do, so I looked at maybe getting into property um, sourcing and deal packaging and decided quite early on that wasn't for me. Um, and when George was about 10 weeks old, maybe eight weeks old, my mum came over. She knew I'd been looking for an opportunity and um, her friend had actually done a webinar because she did online arbitrage. So my mom came and said, look, this sounds crazy, but I think it could work. And I was like, well, that, that can't work. Surely if you can buy stuff at one price and sell it higher on Amazon, everyone would be doing it. And you know, like, it doesn't make sense. Amazon, you get stuff cheap. How could you ever find enough deals to make it work? And I was a bit of a, a bit of a naysayer, but I thought I've got nothing else right now and I'm looking for an opportunity. So we'll give it a try. So we did, we started just with RA, you know, going out to the shops with our scanner, looking particularly in Smith's daunted by everything walking back out going to the Costa next door all the time we've got like a newborn baby with us um and started very slowly to build up some confidence bought some stock took four weeks before we shipped one box in uh got it into Amazon made a thing I remember I was in Portugal with my husband and by this time George was five months old and we made four sales and we, it was £44 in total. And I thought we'd win the lottery. I said, Sam, let's go for a lobster dinner. We went out and had a lobster dinner in Porto because I'd done four sales. I was like, this is it, Rodney. <laughs> We're going to be millionaires. And then, obviously, the RA side grew. We were packing loads of boxes. We got the baby. Our house had turned into like a toy shop last Q4. 
and I started to realize that the next ceiling was uh, looking at how we scale this. So that's when we moved into OA. So we moved into OA a lot more the first, uh, the first quarter of this year. And then we were still getting everything sent to our house. So then we'd moved up to about 150 units a week that we were shipping in as, as we approached Q2. Um, and by Q3, I was starting to feel a bit disheartened, really. I was feeling like we were putting loads of work in. Um, I'd just hired my first sourcing assistant. I had loads of trouble with sourcing assistants. It's another story entirely. And I just thought, I can't seem to manage to get a sourcing assistant. I've got this stock coming through my house. I'm up until two o'clock in the morning packing it, up at six o'clock in the morning with the baby. Um, and then started to have things fall into place. Um, met you in September, so right at the end of Q3. By that time, we had started to outsource, so we, we'd got a prep centre um, and realised very quickly that the only way to scale was to just start outsourcing everything. So literally in the last 10 weeks, we've outsourced everything and our business has just gone boom. I mean, we've, we, this month we will have, we've looked and we've done 476% increase on what we did this wow. time last year and 70% increase on what we did this time last month. That's exceptional growth. That's amazing. So the, your, your last year and a half with having a, a newborn, starting yeah. a business, um, it, it's, for me, thinking back of my own personal journey, like that's the same happened to me. I, we had Harper. We was, uh, she, she was only six months when we first started. So it's absolutely chaos. So what, what, we, what I'm hoping to do over in this call is let's unpack this for people. Let's, because it's been, a, it's been a crazy 18 months for you. So if somebody's just watching this and sort of um, just getting started and we can relate to there's products everywhere around the house, you feel like you're, you're doing more work than maybe what you're getting out, you know, the, the early mornings, the late nights. Um, what would you say is what what's your just off the bat the the best advice just to anybody watching this what what's the biggest thing that you've maybe learned to go from where you were starting up to where you are now and obviously going into the brand new year with amazing sort of aspirations to where you can take this um two things one i would have outsourced quicker um pro probably the prep center and this is the great thing this is what's really exciting what i've learned is you're like oh but it's an extra cost it is but we work in a business where you can factor that in. So it is an extra cost. I think it costs us sort of like between 50 and 80p in total per item before we were, we were at a level now where we ship a lot more in, so it's changed. So when you're starting out, it's like 50 to 80p per item. You just factor it in. You don't buy stuff that makes your profit less than adding that on. So um, that would be my number one tip would be, outsource at least that part of it because then you can use your time sourcing or you can use your time working with finding sourcing assistants or you can just use your time looking at the business and going okay what do I need to do because uh, it's huge I mean packing was taking probably 10 to 15 hours a week super it was, time consuming isn't it yeah and we couldn't pass we couldn't get more than 150 units out when we were doing it um and then I mean now we're, we're getting six to seven hundred units in a week so it's what's that tripled quadrupled yeah. just, just by outsourcing that and then the other part is and I don't know what your thoughts are on this Kev um might be opening a debate but when we first learned about arbitrage we were told a lot look at ROI look at ROI look at ROI and I'm just going to say this ROI doesn't necessarily mean anything if you haven't got the profit the net profit in there as well so yeah. the ROI is relevant but so many people are like, oh, I'm making 30% ROI, but they're only making, say, like 80p or a pound profit. And if you've got the other costs in like a prep center and that, you're potentially losing money every item that you send in, but it looks like you're getting your 30%. So factor in all of your expenses and work out your profit per item based on that, and you will make more profit. And it's a good habit to get into at the start. Absolutely. So there's two, two, I think, some great fundamental things there from a, from a, a calculation point of view, because ultimately we're buying and selling. So if you get the, if somebody gets the, the calculation incorrect and they don't factor in their expenses, then there's only one way it's, and it's down, unfortunately, you're going to lose money. And the other side to that is, is outsourcing, which is, 
which is fantastic. So, okay, then let's let's talk a little bit about because you, you mentioned a couple of times source in there, and I know you went through um, some experience of trying to hire decent sourcing assistants, and you um, you've had some. Uh, difficulty in that and I think it's one of the most difficult positions to hire for but I know you have been very successful in this so um, if somebody is looking for a, a source and assistant right now and we're gonna do a separate video on this as well guys so if somebody's looking for a, a, a source and assistant right now what what would you say to that person because I know you've got how, how many of you got in your team now you've got a few source and assistants right I've got three and I collaborate with somebody else who's also got three who I've hired <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. for him. <laughs> so combined, we've got six amazing sourcing VAs that have both really helped our business, that have really helped both of our businesses. So we've got yeah. six of them, um, for one purchasing VA. Yeah, so. yeah which, is, which is awesome. And so, so I know there's a lot of people that have looked to hire a sourcing assistant and they've gone to maybe... I don't know, Upwork or they've gone to, to wherever to try recruiting somebody to try training them. And it's, and it's such a, it's such a, a, a difficult thing to do because to, you, you're bringing somebody in, you may put lots of time in with them and they're just not very good. Mm. So what's, what, what would you say is off the top, sort of what's some of the best things that you've learned in what's worked for you training your source and assistants? Um, honestly, it's a little bit of practice makes perfect this one. You, you are going to have to go, go through some of the bad to find the good, but that's not necessarily because they're bad. It might just be because you're not great yet. Um, so much like it is in sourcing products, the products that we bought when we first started versus, you know, we wouldn't even consider buying those now. But at the time we were so excited, we were like, yeah, we found one. Whereas now we totally dismiss it because we've got much better. We understand the systems better. We understand Amazon better. We know much more specifically what we're looking for. And with hiring your VAs, I mean, yes, I have got an excellent system in place now, but I've committed eight months to finding VAs and probably the last five months to getting really, really good at creating a system. And I've invested a lot of time into it. So I suppose beforehand I was looking for VAs that um, were well qualified and have got degrees and I suppose were a bit more like me. And I realized that didn't necessarily work. Actually, what I wanted was people that were just going to work from home. Um, maybe they're studying alongside it, or maybe they've got children, or maybe they just don't want to travel and commute into the city. A lot of them live in the country. It's two hours to get to the city. And they're going to be happy spending three, four, five hours a day just manually sourcing. Um, so that would be one of them. You know, be very clear about what their role is. I think people confuse the job of a VA, a sourcing VA, and you need to be very clear. And the reason that people confuse the job in my experience is because they're not entirely sure how to manually source themselves. So they're a little bit uncertain about how they even find someone to do a job. They're not quite sure how to do themselves. So I guess my number one tip would be spend a bit of time, put some time aside to learn how to manually source yourself. It is a system. If you don't know what it is, reach out and ask people that do. Um, a lot of people rely on deal sheets and get deals from deal sheets as opposed to actually doing the manual sourcing. So then when they've got a hire and train a VA, they, they don't really know where to start. And by hiring and training VAs, it's made me exceptionally good at manual sourcing because I realized actually this was one of the things I didn't really know before hiring and training them myself how to, how to do it. So think about who you're looking for. Think about what you actually want them to do, what their day would look like, what their role would be. And if you don't know the answers to that, live the life of a sourcing VA yourself for a little bit before hiring and training one would probably be the top tips. Yeah, that, that's, you, you've hit some really good points there because um, on one hand, we, we've said that one of the greatest things you can do is outsource. So what that does, and I know a lot of people, and I, I certainly do promote outsourcing and systemizing your business, but the, the, the negative side to that is you may, you may just think by outsourcing sourcing you know you, you're just like oh well it, your business should just grow but if you're not in sourcing yourself if you've not experienced it and you don't know exactly how to manually source to the the best you possibly can yourself then how can you correctly train an assistant to do that so you i think you made a, a i think you made a good point there because i mean for myself 
it's, it's maybe the, one of the reasons, like for me, I was only manually sourcing myself for like six to eight weeks, which that was like five to seven weeks too long, in my opinion. It's, <laughs> it's brutal. I know it's a, it's a brutal thing to do, but you know, for, I think you, you, you really made a good point. If, if somebody really wants to get good at sor- sourcing or training sourcing assistants is go through the, you know, the blood, sweat and massive action tears as I like, put the yeah. hours in, get your system down and then you can easily train, which it sounds like exactly what you've done. Yeah, um, precisely. Precisely. I get a lot of um, people that I'm currently, like people I'm working with now, business owners, and they say, oh, I, I had a great VA. Um, so, you know, like she was available at all times and I could always contact her, whether it was four in the morning in the Philippines or whatever, but she just really struggled with consistency in finding deals. And I'm like, that's not a great VA, a great VA. You don't want necessarily to have them speaking to you all the time. You just want them to give you 10 good deals a day. And again, another reason that that happens, you know, then the conversation goes, and she had authority to source in all categories across Amazon. <laughs> well, to a VA, that's like the worst type of, you think, oh, it's fuck, baby, there's loads then, there's, you know, it's limitless. For a VA, that's the worst thing, another thing that we've learned is, like I said to begin with, just be really specific. One VA per category, ideally. Give them specific KPIs. But again, if you're not doing this yourself, if you haven't done it yourself, you're probably not going to know what I'm even talking about right now, let alone how to tell them how to do it. Yeah, and I've got a, I've got a quick story, which, is, which, which emphasizes this point, but it's not related to Amazon. So when Theo was about, I think he was about four years old, and we walked into Toys R Us. Do you remember them? Toys R Us. They're making um, a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, I, we said to we said to Theo, four years old. We said, Theo, today you can get whatever you want. And we walked into <laughs> Toys R Us, and it was like a four year old, like, oh my god, because all Toys R Us have all the toys out, and it ended up being probably one of the worst things that we ever did because yeah. you know, ninety minutes later, two hours later, he's still like, oh, I don't know what I want. What do I want? And that's like. What I'm trying to get at is that's like a, if you say to a, a, a sourcing assistant, you can just source whatever you want. Just yeah. give me 10 winners. To them, they're like, oh, right, well, I've got, you've got hundreds of stores. You've got yeah. so many places to go source. And it ends up having a, a negative impact. So 100%. Re- really, really a, a good point. So, okay, let's, let's bring it back to uh, yourself now, Sophie. So you're a, you know, you're a business owner. You're, you're a mother. You're a, you're a, you know, you've got a, a loving family. How do you, because I always love to talk a little bit productivity as well in organization. How do you manage your day to day to get all this done? Because, you know, you're, you're building a, a, a growing business with your outsourcing. You've got, you know, you've got a, a toddler and, and how do you manage everything? Um, so it's something I'm massively working on, Kev. <laughs> massively working on um and i don't know if you remember when we were at dinner a couple of weeks ago after the massive success day and you were talking about netflix and i was like what are you talking about you watch tv i was like how do you watch tv and you actually said it's really important so i'm pleased to say since then i've actually watched a series on netflix with my husband and he is very pleased about that as well um because I, i wasn't balancing things really so this is my secret weapon (laughs) ah yes (laughs) and and i literally every um day at the end of my working day i just write down what i need to do next day on sunday i make sure i write my goals down um and i try now very much to separate when i'm working what i'm working on i've just started another business so i've got a day for that business two other days for the project business and then Thursday is my day with George and Friday is my day with George and my friends. Um, so, yeah, I suppose you've only got a certain amount of time in the day. Um, also, I've just started having personal training sessions, which we've talked about and really yeah. cleaned up my eating and my health um, to try and make sure that when I am being productive and working, I'm, I'm there, I'm as focused as I possibly can be. So I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure that my energy and my focus is on point to complete the tasks that I've written down in my diary that need to be achieved that day. Because otherwise I can, because there's a lot going on, just get very distracted. Yeah, and uh, the, the reason why I like to ask this question, I'm really, I'm really glad that you, you, you brought up a couple of things there. Because one, 
one of the, the drawbacks to taking massive action every day is you can get yourself into a, a rat race every single day where you're like, the, the day's not long enough and you, you're going towards burnout, really. And, and I, I speak um, from personal experience where I can't really remember the first six to eight months of my journey because I, I, just, I was just like Terminator mode. I, I, was just, I was just working. Like I was like, sleep for a couple of hours, work, sleep. That was it, eat. That, that, there was no sort of balance whatsoever. So what, I was, um, what myself and Sophie were talking about was uh, what I do now is very specifically put a little bit of time where I can spend some time just completely switched off business and work and spend some time with Kylie, or in your case, spend some time with your husband. Because I think that's really, really important. You know, and I know you, you don't want to be binge watching Netflix all day, mm -hmm. every day. That, that's not what I'm saying. It's just the case of trying to relax your mind and just go and, and spend some time in different areas of your life, such as your, your family and your, your, your husband, your, your wife. Um, so that, that's really, really important. And then obviously, uh, the, from a health and fitness point of view, just by, um, just by doing a little bit of exercise sort of on a daily basis, even if it's just going out for a walk, like I'd walk Harper to school every single day. And I, I love just going out for a walk. Instead of getting in the car, we just go for a walk. And it makes a big difference. So, okay then. Um, so to sort of wrap this up then, Sophie, what, what, does your next, what does your next 12 months look like? From where you are right now, you've got an amazing foundation. You've, you've done you know, incredible over the last 18 months. Where, where are you headed? Um, well, I think what's really happened in the last three months is a huge amount of belief in myself and my ability has come through. So from that now, all of these other business ideas have come up and um, there just seems to be opportunities presenting themselves left, right and centre. And I'm just starting to say yes and then work out the details <laughs> afterwards, which is really exciting, instead of having such a specific and structured plan. Um, Goals wise, we, we're working towards the ultimate goal, which is a five million pound a month turnover. And I'm going to keep talking about that till we hit it, then we'll turn it into another goal. Um, so we're definitely looking to move into wholesaling next year, uh, looking to work a little bit more like you've discussed with some brands. Um, we're looking at working more on our sourcing BA business. And also the big goal for me is in 2021, I would really like to launch my own cosmetics company, which was a dream I've had since I was 17. And it completely gone to the back. I was like, it's impossible. It's never going to happen. And literally in the last couple of months, I've started to think, actually, isn't that kind of like launching a PL and learning about other social media platforms? So launching it with Amazon, looking at Instagram. I don't know how it's going to work yet, but that's something But Towards the end of this year, I want to be setting up for next year. So I just want to learn as much as I possibly can this year, hit loads more challenges, break through them, become a stronger person. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. And um, for those guys that are watching this, um, where can people find you? So if I'm going to put links in the description down below. So if you guys have watched, if you, if you watch this, you got to this point, please give Sophie a, a thumbs up. I really, I really respect and, and appreciate Sophie's time. She's obviously very, very busy. And um, you can find her on the links down below. What platform would you, are you most sort of active on, Sophie? Mm, probably still Facebook. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, I am on Instagram as well, um, but probably Facebook Messenger um, it would be the easiest way to get hold of me. So I'll, yeah, Kev, I'll give you those links i'll yeah. give you my instagram link as well um, yeah, so that's probably the best way to get hold of me yeah so get in contact with sophie especially if you're interested in getting to know more about where she is what she's up to source and assistance sounds like she's going to have an amazing uh, next few months and years ahead so i really appreciate you coming on to the the channel sophie i hope Thanks you have for having me. <laughs> i hope you have a, an outstanding day um is is there any sort of final words that you want to say for anybody watching this yeah just crack on honestly like i've got a friend one of my best friends he's just joined i hope he's watching this actually he's just joined kev's um facebook group this is like months after me going on about it and he saw me start this journey 17 months ago and he was interested 
but he didn't really take any action and he's been very, he's watched, I mean, he's watched all the videos. I, I've not really watched any videos, but he's watched all of the videos. He can tell you everything about it, but he hasn't bought an item yet. He's just about setting up his account. He's 17 months on. I haven't watched that many videos. Um, I've watched some videos I needed to that was relevant and I've got out and I've contacted people that are doing well. And I've said, what are you doing? How are you doing it? You know, teach me. Um, we've taken on mentoring courses from people that are doing better than us so that we can follow in their footsteps and never, but just as Kevin said, just get on with it. Just take some action. Don't overanalyze it. You're going to make some mistakes, but for every mistake you're going to make, you're going to learn tons. So just get going, just get started. Absolutely love it. So uh, great advice. It's all about the massive action and hence why I say it every single time. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate you watching. And uh, until next time, have an outstanding day. Bye-bye. See ya.